try to support the melody, you know. But that that doesn't happen necessarily. You know, I, 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 I think. Do we need the, the microphone or you can hear? Yeah, it's better with the microphone. Yeah. 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 No. So there's a it's a very good sounding room. So the thing is, ah, we need the microphone. Okay, I know why. So so the thing is is as as a, as like if you're presenting the melody, I always try to present as accurately as I can, you know. But I have to put my voice on it. So like the instrumental goes melody. To know the chords and, and 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 that's gonna make all the difference, you know. So if you if you if you're working with this tune, you know, it's basically like 90% of the standards are A A B A. So they're very simple, actually, very very simple, <clears throat> you know. So you play just the melody in different note. Take 
this note. It's my first note for my first chord. You know Stella by Starlight?
después ya no recuerdo bien lo que estaba diciendo. <risa> es que me llamó Monse. Pero... Exacto, conectando los voices de distintas formas para no estar siempre haciendo lo mismo. Se están tocando diferentes acordes, Tocas eh, una, desde una nota y continúas en una escala eh, conectando los acordes. Sí. So, I, I, I think the, the, the main word, uh, word for uh, when it comes to jazz, when it comes to jazz or any kind of improvised music, because it's not just jazz. That is improvised. Chopin, for instance, the, the great piano player, Chopin was a great improviser. You know, uh, Rachmaninoff, the, the, the composer, the Russian composer, was a great improviser. They, they were, weren't, they didn't play jazz in the sense of jazz, but they were improvisers. So when it comes to improvisation, the, the most important word is fluence. La palabra más importante cuando se habla de improvisación es fluidez, eh, y que incluso menciona que los improvisadores como Chopin o Rachmaninoff ¿no? y eh, también lo hacían que la improvisación no es solamente <coughs> una característica ya sino que se hacen muchas músicas y en todas la característica común es la fluidez porque es una lengua porque es un lenguaje <risa> De qué forma? Eu vou tocar meus acordes. Compreendem? Sim. 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 Eu vou tocar meus acordes sem parar de tocar as escalas que eu estou tocando. Então, eu poderia, se eu toco Estela vai estar, eu posso tocar assim. Só for like uh, tocando uh, leaks. You know what I'm saying? Leaks? Uh, yeah. Sim. Sim. Sim.
una cantante, como lo trabajas, por ejemplo, con un pianista o otro guitarrista? Muy buena pregunta. Yo aprendí de la manera difícil porque empecé a tocar profesionalmente cuando tenía 14 años. So I, uh, so a lot of people got mad on me. Y mucha gente se enojó conmigo. Because it's very, it's very different when you play with a piano player or without a piano player, especially in Brazilian music when the guitar plays a, such a, an important role, really, a rhythm, rhythmicamente. Es muy, es muy, muy, muy diferente tocar eh, música brasileña cuando se toca con un piano y cuando no se toca con un piano, especialmente en la guitarra, porque eh, es un instrumento muy prominente en el ritmo, ritmi, rítmicamente en el estilo. Entonces tienes que ser muy, 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 muy preciso. There's a difference between swing, jazz, and Brazilian music. And I learned that playing with Americans. So, a lot of Americans, so like, and, and great players. So, the swing is more relaxed, you know? It doesn't matter if you're playing like a, a 340, you know? It has to be relaxed, it's never, but uh, Cuban music, Brazilian music, it's always on top of the beat, you know? La, la música de swing o de jazz normalmente es más relajada y hay una diferencia con la música brasileña o cubana que siempre está mucho más como por encima, ¿no? más arriba. So I started uh, practicing with uh, all this this exercise like connecting and stuff with the metronome. So for instance, if I play this and play in the the, the As you said, there's a lot of different rhythms, so I'm gonna show just a little bit of, of different rhythms so you can see. So if it's a samba, you can...
uma guitar player em, em, em Brasil called Ritmos Brasileiros. And it's from Marco Pereira, and actually it, it was written by Marco Pereira in Luiz Brasil. Muchos ritmos brasileiros explicados em sua origem, então, como surgiram. There is a, there, I was talking to the, the guy that the, the, the Brazilian uh, why of different region, uh, rhythms has a reason. You know? Most of the rhythms came from Congo <coughs> and Angola, when the slaves came to Brazil, of course, in some other regions, right? So when, when we say Afro-Brazilian, Actually, they are Afro, but they are more Brazilian. Why? Because in Africa, these different uh, people from different places, different villages, right, in Africa, they were enemies. Para la gran variedad de ritmos brasileños, eh, hay una razón. Eh, la razón que explica es que había en Brasil llegaron personas de del Congo y de, y de Angola. Y, y por eso es que hay tanta variedad de ritmos. Sí. Oh. Ah, que ellos eran enemigos y no se hablaban los de Congo con los de Angola. But when they came to Brazil, you know, they they were forced to talk to each other, right? Cuando llegaron a Brasil fueron forzados a hablarse entre ellos. Entonces. ¿Eh? <risa> 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 They started like mixing different rhythms that never talked to each other in Africa. Y empezaron a mezclar distintos ritmos que nunca se habían mezclado en África. Então assim nasceram os ritmos brasileiros de diferentes partes da África que nunca se falaram. Y así nacieron los ritmos brasileños de diferentes partes de África que nunca se hablaron. Eu vou dar o um exemplo de dois aqui, tá? Vai ser um. Um deles chama-se Ijechá, é da Bahia, tá? traducimos a la guitarra de hecho fueron primero creados en, en percusiones un buen ejemplo de eso es la bossa nova la so, bossa nova por eso João Gilberto de no João Gilberto es un genio porque lo que él hizo es que él tomó hay una percusión en Brasil llamada surdo y el surdo todo el surdo lo que hace surdo, all the surdo, uh, uh, does is, downbeat boom, boom, dois, um, dois, um, dois. and then you have the tamborim we call the tamborim 
meaning that is what? This is the tambourine. So João Gilberto combined both into.
study fast tempos, fast tempos. So that, that there is a technique involved. There is a technique that you have to basically it's, it's the Brazilian rhythms, the Brazilian the samba, for instance. So it's like a samba. It, it, it's actually it's the samba, but samba funk as well. There, there, there's a there's a Para poder durar tocando a, a tiempos a, más rápidos. 
primero uno trabaja en los ritmos lentos, después sube el metrónomo y bueno, después, después explicó que en Boston tocaba en el carnaval por tres horas ese ritmo y, y pues que esa capacidad solo se desarrolla como trabajando esa técnica y, y que es muy importante para que el tiempo no se caiga. Sí, eh, eh, another, another thing that I do, otra cosa que, que costumo practicar es cantando la melodía y trying to keep my rhythm going in different accents. So, for instance, that's this tune that we played yesterday called Ah uh So it's so the melody is basically. Well, 
él contestó que sí le dijiste bueno o sea, acerca de los cambios de clave de 2 3 o 3 2 en la música brasileña pues él, él hablaba de que realmente no hay una manera técnica de que tú puedas explicar sino que lo hacen de una forma muy natural y pues básicamente es lo que le resta es como intentar explicar el swing que que no, no es solamente una fórmula de hacer one, tin, 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 sino que hay muchas maneras de hacerlo bien. No, no, nobody plays swings like tin, 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 nobody does that, you know. The drummers, they vary a lot. Tin, 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 So it's not like always the same thing, always the same figure, you know. And a lot of drummers, not you, <laughs> a lot of drummers, that one of the, the biggest mistakes, they're not even true, like biggest mistakes when they, they play Brazilian music doing with the cross stick, like tack, 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 nobody plays like that, man. Tack, 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 tack. So there's a, a lot of variations that, that can be done, and, and this is something that it happens naturally. Each drummer plays in a in, a, in their own way, you know, it's not something that is a formula, but it's, it varies, it just varies, you know, like so, that's how it works. No, I need a formula. That's a very, very interesting question. So, uh, in Brazil, in Brazil, we don't use that much. It's not traditional the steel string guitar. You no, know? what we have the steel string is viola, which is not viola in the in the sense of classical instrument. We have a viola that is from the like the the. Sertão, I don't know how to do it, like the inland, is the inland part of Brazil, not the coast. They have this very traditional kind of local uh, instrument that has 10 strings and it's called viola. And they, they tuned in a completely different, it's beautiful actually. And they use like, you know, Cascavel, the, 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 the snake? They use like the, the gizu, how do you call it? It's like, so to good luck, they put in the, there's a lot of traditions and mysteries about this instrument. That's the only steel string instrument other than the bandolin. Bandolin is a steel string instrument. But as far as guitar, the sixth string guitar, Brazil, it's all about nylon the string. So from, you, you said the Levando Reis, uh, Baden Powell, Rafael Rabelo, we have Garoto, which is a, in, in, in one of my favorites, because he was such a genius as far as when it comes to harmonies. He was from the 30s, 1930s, and then you have Bola Sech that moved and Luis Bonfa that both moved to the US and they both played nylon string. I started out as classical guitar player. I was classical, classical trained uh, as a kid and, uh, and I think it was really important for my technique. Really important. You know, the, the classical uh, guitar, you know, the nylon string guitar. We have a, uh, I was talking to, to a really good friend of mine, uh, a guitar player in the US, and in Brazil we have a school, 
of, of nylon string. That, that it, and we actually have a couple of different schools, right? We have, a, for instance, the guys you, you said that they are soloists. So, Serestas, Gilermando Reis used to play a lot of Serestas, which was this kind of beautiful tunes, uh, played solo guitar. There's a, there's a, and Villa Lobos, of course, Villa Lobos has some really, really beautiful uh, studios for, for nylon strings. So there's a lot of composers in Brazil that compose for the, the, the classical nylon string. The Villa Lobos studios are it's fantastic. They're great. And, but, uh, and then we have the, the accompanists, João Bosco, Dori Caymmi, João Gilberto, you know, Gilberto Gil, which is a fantastic guitar player, you know, for comping uh, guitar. And all this, and Ginga, which is another, you know, have you heard about Ginga? So you have to check this guy out. The Ginga is really amazing, you know, and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a, an incredible uh, nylon string guitar player. He's modern and he, uh, we, we teach every year in California in a place called the Brazil Camp. And he's really amazing. It's like an older guy. It's like uh, 60 or something, or, or, or 60, in his 60s. So, Tell about that. There's a lot of different schools uh, nylon string guitar in Brazil. Okay. Bueno, en Brasil, lo primero que empezó a, a decir el maestro es que eh, la, la guitarra de, de, de cuerdas de acero eh, realmente no, no existe dentro de la tradición, sino que la tradición brasileira está basada más que nada en la guitarra acústica y que, por ejemplo, él, por ejemplo, desde niño también mm, fue entrenado como guitarrista clásico que también es una escuela musical muy fuerte, muy arraigada en Brasil, no solamente por músicos que, que tocan, sino también por compositores como Villalobos y muchos otros que componen específicamente para ese instrumento, para la guitarra con cuerdas de nylon. Y pues recomendó algunos nombres a John Gilberto, Gilberto Gil, Gilberto Gilberto, Gilberto Gil, Ginga, 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 G-U-E-G-A, Ginga. That's his name, Ginga. And then uh, Dori Caymmi. Dori Caymmi is really wonderful. Uh, João Bosco, uh, Dilemando Reis. And from the newer generation, we have Marcos Tardelli, Yamandu Costa. We have a lot of people, great guitar, liner strings. And, and we don't play with the pick. So I, when I comp, sometimes I comp, I pluck. I don't use the pick, this little guy here. Uh, when I solo, I use the pick, and there's a reason for that. Because uh, the, the, when, you, when you solo in a more linear, linear, you know, like way, instead of doing this kind of stuff, like a lot of like a open strings and blah, 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 it's more even when you, when you do it with the pick. I do a, a, a lot of research, guys, believe me. Like I, 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 like I, I, I studied a lot to try. We never, as as classical players, and that that's something that I talk a lot with the guitar players. We never, we can't do this kind of stuff without the pick. You know, there's always a difference between the fingers. You know, the way the peso of the, of the, of the dedos, right, the peso of those dedos, is different, a different. So we cannot do that. You know. Impossible to do with the fingers. Impossible. You cannot do that. No. When you use the, like in the same string, like more linear, you know this kind of stuff. So that's why I, I solo with the pick and I comp without the pick when I'm when I'm playing Brazilian music because it's impossible to do that with the with the pick. It's different. It was a different sound. You can try. Sometimes I do, but it's different. Than... So, in Brazilian music, the tradition is to play with the fingers. There's always a saying in Brazil that says, nylon string, no pick. You know, they say that in Brazil. <laughs> nylon string, is pretty, uh, string, don't use the pick. You know, this is a sacrilege. Just translate that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> si es una guitarra de cuerdas de nylon, no utilices la, la púa. 
es una, es una ley en Brasil. Es un sacrilegio. <risa> sacrilegio. So if, si usted usa la púa, en Brasil es considerado un sacrilegio. Pero yo, yo peco mucho porque uso. <risa> ok, terminamos con una más. Una pregunta más. Una pregunta más. Ok. Pues. Ok, here. Okay, the experience of pain. We have a trio. Uh, so that, that it's great. Aris, man, is amazing. Ari is amazing. We we started playing. Uh, he called me. He me He called me to do a session at his place. That happens a lot in New York. In, in New York, that's a great thing. Like we always doing jump sessions. You know. Uh, and I prefer to do jump sessions on on people's, you know, like a, on, on, not like in, in clubs, because there's always so many people to play. So it's kind of like a sort of like you and you'll be there, like and, and so I do eventually, like kind of quite often, quite often, uh, on like especially drummers places. So like Eric called me and we start playing and and we love to play together. Eric is very. He's very into odd meters, you know, like, and he's very, he's not like a, a, a standard kind of drummer. He's really a storyteller, you know, like, because he's always, remember, you're talking about melody, he's, he has all the melodies in his head, and he's really, really amazing. I mean, he's really amazing. He can play anything on his own, you know, kind of way, kind of way. So it's not, when he's playing Brazilian or playing whatever, he plays on Ari's way, which I love it. You know, like when I call a different drummer from my group, I don't like the drummer to try to emulate the drummer that plays with me if, if often or anything like that. I I call a drummer to be him, and, and Eddie never tried to, to sound Brazilian when he plays Brazilian or nothing. He sounds like him wherever he plays, and it's great. You know, it's great. It's different than trying to do something that is not your own thing, right? So that's the pro that's a really good process. You know, to, to follow, you know, like you imitate, but then you try to do it in your own way. But that requires time and years, you know, like it's, it's not something that happens overnight. Okay, le preguntaban acerca de cuál eh, de, de opinión tenía sobre su colaboración con Ari Monik en, en el trío. Y bueno, le contesta que Ari es una persona, pues, muy, 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 muy musical, muy, muy talentosa. Y, que Ari lo invitó a él a una jam session en su casa eh, y que comentaba también que esto es muy, 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 muy natural en Nueva York, pasa todo el tiempo y que él por ejemplo prefiere hacer eso que ir a un club de jazz donde hay mucha gente haciendo fila para tocar, él prefiere este, llamar gente y hacer una jam session con músicos, entonces Ari así fue como lo llamó y hablaba sobre Ari que es un músico que está muy metido en los tiempos eh, eh, odd rhythms, los tiempos eh, compuestos perdón. Y, eh, pues, pero que también nunca trata de tocar como alguien más, siempre toca las cosas como él, él como es él, ¿no? siempre es en su, en su propia manera de tocar ni siquiera tampoco intenta emular a algún músico que por ejemplo toque con Chico todo el tiempo eh, no trata de, de tocar como brasileño, sino que a Chico le gusta llamar músicos para que sean ellos mismos y no traten de imitar a nadie. For instance, I, I, been, I played recently with a, with a wonderful drummer from here, Antonio Sanchez, and it's a completely different story. You know Antonio, of course, and I know Antonio for many years, and we played like an, an Antonio. He changed a lot the way he's playing, but he's always Antonio. You know, he's evolving. You know, he's changing, changing, and searching, 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 like Ari. They're both like searching, searching. If you listen to Antonio playing from 10 years, you know, like, and you listen to Antonio now, his sound changed, he changed, you know, and Brian Blade is the same, like, they all change, involved, you know, like, and that's, that's because he's, they're playing with different people, you know, like, and they kind of like a, like, you know, like a, there's an influence there, so they are all so different, and they're never like they're very strong-minded as far as musicians. So, for instance, like Antonio, we never try to sound like 
Brian, you know, it's a completely different animal. You know, they're, they're so different, so different, so different. And then Kendrick Scott, which is another drummer, wonderful, you guys know Kendrick, different. You know, they have their own sound, you know, like, and that's so beautiful, you know, to have your sound. And people be, being able to recognize that. You know, so this is, this is Eric, this is Kendrick, this is whatever, you know, we do, Ribeiro, this is Antonio, this is whatever. Like, they all have their own voices, really strong voices. That's important. Sí, pues hablaba sobre que hace poco tocó con Antonio Sánchez y que lo conoce de muchos años atrás y aunque Antonio ha cambiado mucho su manera de tocar sigue siendo Antonio y, y es un músico que como Ari también que siempre está en búsqueda de, de mejorar, de, de desarrollarse pero que nunca dejan de ser ellos mismos y que eso es algo muy bonito que, que ¿Qué pasa con los músicos que son tan talentosos pero que nunca dejan de...? ¿Por qué? Porque acreditan, ellos acreditan en lo que están haciendo, acreditan mucho. Porque creen en lo que están haciendo. Esta noche en el Teatro del Estado a las 8, el maestro presenta el